Sean right here for Flex and Muscle and Fitness Online. I'm here to talk to you guys about comebacks because that's all the rage right now. I was actually sitting in the airport coming back from Vancouver, Canada to California and I just mentioned very briefly on my Facebook page and on, uh, on Instagram, I'm coming back. I didn't say what I was coming back to. I didn't make reference to bodybuilding. I didn't make reference to the Mr. Olympia. I just simply said, I'm coming back. And the next thing you knew, my phone was lighting up, my Instagram DMs were happening, and my Facebook messages. It seems that uh, a large population of athletes, or fans I should say, want to see me back on the stage one more time. And, and let me put the, the word come back into its proper context. When, you, when you've competed at a very high level for a very long time, and then you take an extended layoff, uh, it's very hard to actually come back. Uh, because there's a lot of other factors that are involved in that uh, retirement process. I got married, I started a family, and bought a house, and I moved a couple of times, and I got into the promotion end, and, and the marketing end, and the endorsement end, and, and I got into other aspects of the business, but of course life continued to churn away and uh, pull me further and further away from that singular, focused, and dedicated lifestyle that required, I required, in order to be one of the very best bodybuilders in the world. Now that being said, I was being facetious when I said I'm coming back. I mean, I'm just coming home. But I wasn't coming back to bodybuilding per se. Some notorious comebacks that we can say were admirable, we can also say that they were inspirational. But one thing we cannot say was that they lived up to the hype. Let's get started with one of the most notorious comebacks in my years in bodybuilding. And that would be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger came back after a five-year layoff um, from 1975 when he retired after winning six Mr. Olympia championships. He was a very young guy at the time. I believe he was somewhere around 28 years old uh, when he made the comeback, and he wound up winning a very controversial victory out in Australia, one that I actually agreed with, but the pundits out there don't. I just didn't see how Chris Dickerson uh, was going to beat Arnold because... He was just too too small, didn't have enough muscle. Arnold was not at his best, don't get me wrong, but the lineup wasn't strong enough to contend with what Arnold Schwarzenegger brought to the stage in terms of his signature poses. I think that carried him, his confidence carried him. Um, and there's other factors besides his physique that carried him to victory. Very controversial win, but that was a successful comeback because he won his seventh Mr. Olympia and quietly retired thereafter. Never to be seen from or heard from again on a bodybuilding stage. The next comeback I heard was in 1992, and that was a show that I was in in Helsinki, Finland, when the Incredible Hulk, Lou Ferrigno, made his infamous comeback after a 17-year layoff. Started a family, had three kids, was married, was Hollywood, doing all these things, and he came out of retirement, largely in part by Vince McMahon challenging Joe Weider to the bodybuilding industry with the WBF and dangling a carrot in front of one of his favorite sons in terms of a contract, and of course, Lou sided with Joe and he signed a three-year contract and came back. Uh, he did come back and he was 10th place in that comeback. Um, it wasn't a, a very deep lineup in Helsinki, Finland, but Lou Ferrigno did beat Ronnie Coleman. Uh, not as successful as he might have hoped that first time, but he stayed in it in 93 and 94, and he ultimately wound up getting a very close second place to Robbie Robinson in the Masters Olympia in 1994 in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I don't think it was close. I don't think it was controversial. Robbie won that show, but Lou Ferrigno beat a lot of good guys, Boyer Co. being one of them, who was also sort of on the comeback, but Boyer never really stopped training. Lou Ferrigno had. Uh, and then another infamous comeback happened at my show in, I believe, 2006 or seven. Gary Strider, the white rhino, the 1986 national overall champion, uh, a kind of a promise unkept. He was supposed to be the guy to beat Lee Haney. And in 1988, he won in fifth place at his first Mr. Olympia. I believe that was his only Mr. Olympia. But prior to that show, the hype was he stood neck and neck with Lee Haney and was going to be Lee Haney's equal, of course, until they turned around to the rear and Gary Stratum wound up in fifth place. That was in 1988. He won a couple of pro shows along the way, took an extended vacation. Then he wound up retiring after a very successful clothing company, moved out to Thailand, and out of the blue, Gary Stratum winds up at the Sean Ray Colorado Pro in 2000, I think, six or seven, one of those years. And uh, Gary Stratum, I think he was like eighth place. He looked respectable by himself, but again, Father Time is undefeated. Gary Stratum looked good, but he was beaten by several bodybuilders that normally would have never beaten Gary in, the, in his prime in the late 80s. 
But nonetheless, he was in the show and he did make that comeback. Um, more recently, of course, Kevin Lavroni, he did not fare so well, although he looked great from the waist up, from the front, from the back, he kind of faded. And of course, the lower body never did come back after a 12 year layoff. And of course, the fabulous Flex Wheeler, the Hall of Famer, came back to classic physique, not bodybuilding, didn't make the top 10 of the classic physique, but by favor and his name and his reputation, they allowed him to perform at the finals just so the fans could get one last look at one of the greats of all time. Sadly, it went kind of flat. He was Flex Wheeler light. He didn't look like he used to, and there was a lot of expectation for him to live up to the hype, and he was a shadow of himself. So that being said, I'm 18 years in retirement, folks. I am retired. You're not gonna see me with this shirt off. I've got zero desire to get back on that stage, although I still train and I still love to eat. The last thing I wanna do is try to do what these young guys are doing because I did it for uh, so many years at the highest level of my life and I am comfortably sitting in the seats watching like you guys as a fan of this sport. No more comebacks for me. Muscle Fitness and Flex, I'm Sean Ray.